Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is Chuck Owen, composer, arranger, educator, extraordinaire. And we get to talk about a new album that is ready to be shared with the public. Well, we'll get the specifics in a minute. Welcome, Chuck. Thanks, Monica. I appreciate the chance to be here and to talk about this. Oh, absolutely. So this is cool music and it's cool music, not just because of the composition, but also because of the ensemble and the type of the ensemble and the texture and, and instrumentation of the ensemble. Give us a little synopsis of, of this group, how it was founded, and just a little background. Well, there's 25 years of synopsis. That was actually part of the impetus for doing this album. It kind of evolved as, as I got into it. But initially it was, I just thought, 25 years, boy, we should do something. We should celebrate. You know what kind of better way to celebrate than making another album and getting everybody together again. It's evolved a little bit, but actually personnel has stayed remarkably the same. There's four folks on this album that have been on every single one we've done. This is our seventh album. And a good number of the others came with in probably the first eight to ten years of the, the band, maybe even earlier than that, maybe for after the first five years, and have been with ever since. Um, but what has evolved a little bit is kind of the notion of going from kind of more of a standard jazz big band format into one that has allowed me to kind of follow some of my interest in oh, American folk music and kind of a little bit of classical music and, and just other textures that you kind of alluded to. 15, 20 years ago, we added a second guitar. That was kind of the first thing. And both of these things evolved a little bit just by doing specific pieces. So I did a piece that called for a second guitar and I fell in love with it. And so we added that. So the second guitar in the band is a completely acoustic guitar position, playing every acoustic guitar known to man. Nylon strings to dobros to 12 string guitars. And that just really kind of brings out a lot of the folk sounding stuff. The violin was the same situation as I wrote a piece for, actually it was for violin and cello with the big band. Just loved what the violin brought to the big band. And so I, I never turned back. I mean, that violin has just become a chair in the band. In some ways, I think it's the maybe the most distinctive thing about the band. We've had two wonderful violinists. Rob Thomas started off doing it when I first used violin, and he was absolutely phenomenal. Sarah Caswell now is the bias. She's been with me not for the last I guess, two albums, but also with a small group that I have. She's a dear, dear friend. Just so evocative in her playing, and it really brings a lot. I brought in a few other instruments that I've played myself. I've got an accordion that I play, and a lot of times you could probably hardly notice it. It's just that it blends with other instruments so beautifully, and I love that sound. I used hammer dulcimer too for some of the more mountain music and that was a beast to learn to play you know as a keyboard player it has just no relationship whatsoever to the, the piano keyboard there's a logic to it but boy it, it took a minute it's, it's actually a very cool instrument and you know in, in learning this i did i kind of access some videos of folks who really play the instrument unlike me and it's it's amazing what you can do on it it's it's an incredible instrument but for me it's again it's just another color that i have that hopefully very subtly just put onto these other colors other types We'll talk some more about the band, especially since it's 25 years, but I, I want to get a uh, music in. This is actually the opening track, which is the Chelsea Shuffle. And I was listening to it. I know this, I know this. And then, oh yeah, yeah it's Chicory Husky. And I heard that so many times on Rio albums. How come you picked that one? This is kind of a sad story, actually. I mean, Chick was supposed to have done this album with us. Friendly with Chick over the last few years, particularly. You know, he had a place here um, not too far away way and he would occasionally do performances and that sort of thing and he and his wife Gail were so kind to invite me all the time and you know, most of the time there was time beforehand for us to hang a little bit uh, there was one premiere of a video of his he came out I got to sit at his right hand we had a lot of time to, to talk you know he was always a huge influence and I just found him to be a very kind generous playful person and musician and so I just kind of nervously asked him one time whether he'd be willing to be our guest you know featured guest artist on this album and he immediately said yes so we talked a little bit about what that involved. Now, I really wanted to write a piece just for him. In turn, I was going to take a piece of his and arrange it. And so he's going to play on those two pieces. So I kind of wanted to honor that. Even when he passed, we obviously weren't going to be able to record with him. This was the tune we had talked about my arranging. So I went ahead and, and arranged it. And that was one of the reasons, the only sub on this band, the personnel this year, in terms of the actual band, that was different from the album we did previously four years ago, was the second alto player. My second alto player had some health issues and she just couldn't make it. So I hired Steve Wilson to come in and do it. And partly I did that because of his relationship with Chick. That was another little nod to Chick. It was a very subtle one. Most people won't get it. But for me, that 
it was it was just meaningful and very important so he's the one taking the solo on this so steve solos on this one the guest artist on this and that's another kind of a related chick story is warren wolf on vibes so those are the two solos on this in honor of chick let's all think about him and jam with him wherever he is let's have a listen to the chelsea shuffle which is one of his newer compositions he wrote yeah. that for his new trio so it's pretty recent and it's a wonderful arrangement and we can hear a warren wolf and steve wilson and the band of my guest today, Chuck Owen. <laughs>
That was the Chelsea Shuffle, a Chick Corea tune arranged by my guest today, Chuck Owen, who recorded this recently for a new album with his group, The Jazz Search, celebrating the 25th anniversary, which is quite an achievement to have with the group and, and that many members who have been with it. And we talked about the two guitars, but of course the violin is such a trademark and with Sarah being one of our Bloomington's own, we are very proud of her. And this one, I hear a little pinball wizard on the guitar. Am I right on that? Trail of the Ancients. The Trail of the Ancients. Tell us about that one. Everybody brings that up. It was thoroughly unintentional, yet thoroughly intentional. I got to a spot where there's a very swift kind of change to a very folky sort of driving rhythm. I had already written a bunch of the other things. I just knew I wanted this to be bare bones. I wanted it mostly just the acoustic guitar. It's kind of a 12-string guitar right there. But when you strip away all this melody and stuff that I do later on, the result progression ended up sounding just like as pinball wizard and so the first time i kind of snapped to that as i was writing at the oh my gosh we're gonna have to find some voicings and, and i played with some things and i figured you know but this is a better i'm gonna talk to the guitarist about this we played with it you know that one of the suggestions they were going to try nashville tuning to see if i don't think there's any getting around with it. what's been funny is that when i first kind of mortified me for a second and i thought well that's you know but more and more folks have said oh that's what they really like about it it has nothing to do with pinball wizard it's just that driving folk rhythm that I really wanted but the fact that other people kind of find that is kind of almost an easter egg in the, the thing is kind of fascinating so obviously the whole who has become a cultural icon and it tells you yeah. how, how much of it right on this one this is a, a 12 minute track yeah which is not that unusual for me the length of the tracks on this recording are the probably the shortest that I've put out in the last four recordings or the, at least there are some short ones um, this was not one of them part of that was actually intentional I find myself just thinking in, in terms of longer structures a lot of time that you you know, the key is I just want to make sure that if I am writing a longer piece, there's a, the narrative is still flowing and I'm really taking people on a journey the whole time rather than we're just padding it somehow. The length is, it's a little bit longer. There's lots of ebbs and flows. The characters kind of emerge and reemerge. Hopefully it engages people. I wanted to point that out as a great advantage. It's not your usual, okay, here plays the head and then comes a solo and then a shout yeah. call. But that taking the listener on a journey is a very cool thing and, and I love that. When, when that is possible. I've become totally enamored with it. It's almost a very literary approach to composition. It's identifying characters, scenes, and all that sort of things, and, and making sure that the storytelling is there. I guess that's really what I want to be as a storyteller in, in music. Which story should we imagine when we listen to that Trail of the Ancients? This one is, is kind of about all those influences. I, ancients probably is not something my own parents would have liked to have been called. But nevertheless, when we're thinking about people who influence us, it's everything from parents to other great musicians who have influenced us, almost all sorts of people. It can be politicians. And there's a actual, about in kind of southeastern Utah and southwestern Colorado, there's a, actually a road that's called the Trail of the Ancients that basically takes you through all of these Native American iconic places, places that were very spiritual to them and very important historically. And so that was the kind of reference. To me, I found that sort of ability to look back and honor the past a really important thing. So that's kind of what this was and it kind of tied into the whole notion of the 25th anniversary and that we were kind of looking back as well as forward this is the looking back part let's take everybody on a journey and i love that about instrumental music too you just close your eyes and everybody gets their own image bribing it with a set of words take it in right this is the trail of the ancients from the 25th anniversary album coming out by the jazz search so written and arranged by my guest today chuck owen here we go
That was Trail of the Ancients, written and arranged by my guest today, Chuck Owen, and performed by his group, the Jazz Search, as they celebrate the 25th anniversary of playing and recording together. We're going to get several more tastes from that album. The release date is official. The release date is September 17th. Some early CDs have made their way to at least my house. So if people actually hear this before then and they're interested, um, they can visit my website. It should be widely available. September 17th on. And the website would be chuckowen.com. Yeah. It is important in these day and age because we're so bombarded with so many things every day. I have my students guess in the first week how many new tracks are uploaded every day on Spotify. It's 60,000 and growing. Every day we adding to this pool of available listening options. 60,000 more just on this one service. Talking about stories we're going to get into the dark ballad realm here, right? There is the individuals, there's, you know, specific horn duets or triplets. So it feels like a small group in a big group. And it's also the same with the textures, with the chord structures who are very close. Tell us a little bit about your process of writing. I love having a big band, all the colors and all the power of a, of a traditional big band. But I also love the real intimacy of chamber music. I think that intimacy oftentimes speaks to people a little bit more than the power. The power is a great foil for it. It kind of sets it up so it can be maybe more evocative yet. Kind of takes you from one spot to a, a spot of, of great power. But to just be constantly bombarded with that power to me is something that I'm, well, at least I'm not interested in, in, in doing. I love those really transparent moments. I seek out that, the different colors. And I've mentioned already how much I'm engaged in the whole idea of storytelling and kind of narrative. At the same time, I'm, I grew up as just a jazz musician. So at the heart of all of this is still song form, you know, of a space. They're basically songs that are just messed with and blown up into these proportions that don't feel like song forms anymore. You know, they almost all evolve out of that in some way, shape, or form. You know, that's a skill. I mean, we know from Stan Kenton's wall of sound, yes, sounds are powerful and they can blow you to the wall. It loses its impact if it's constant. Kind of a fan of classical music, as I mentioned, also folk music. So from the classical end, it's I'm probably more orchestrally oriented than chamber music there. I love the color but the folk music, I love the intimacy of one singer with a guitar in his or her hand just speaking to an audience. And I love for my big band to have that same effect as that singer with that guitar. And I think you can kind of hear that. Yeah, this oh. is the American War. This one was, a, it was my 2020. All sorts of political shenanigans going on. COVID was in the midst of it. We assaulted with something we've known for all the time, but all the inequities that many of our minorities face constant. And, but we were, we saw it firsthand. It just felt like so much of what I admire about the American ideal, this was not the American. And I kind of wanted to comment on that. And at the same time, what I found is I'm kind of the perpetual rose-colored glasses sort of person. Think what you end up hearing in American Noir, even though I, I think you hear some of the strife, it's more the sadness at the loss, recognizing that we've lost something along the way. There's still the love for the ideals, for the country, and for what I think we still can be. I don't think all is lost by any means. And, you know, that was a it was a rotten year. So everybody has their 2020 compositions. I got some of those too. Yep. This is the American 
American War, and this is also from the upcoming album. What's actually the title of the album? It's, uh, the album title is Within Us. Coming out on September 17 by the Jazz Search and written and composed and arranged by my guest today, Chuck Owen. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was American Noir, a piece composed and arranged by my guest today, Chuck Owen, from his upcoming album Within Us with his group, The Jazz Search. We talked about how everybody had their 2020 compositions and experiences and need to express all the things that were going on. And you mentioned that you were inspired for some of the music by a poem, too. I stumbled onto this poem, actually, I think I saw it on Facebook or something like that, and I was stunned by Albert Camus read a couple of novels a long time ago, I always associated these very dark, brooding, very much focused on himself, but, but kind of, if not pessimistic, certainly fatalistic. But this poem, in the midst of 2020, it's just felt so uplifting. And I'm not sure that's the way he meant it at the time that he wrote it. I think I'll read it to you and, and see what you think. In the midst of hate, I found there was within me an invincible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. And I realized through it all that in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. Again, I was touched by that. So when we first gathered to record this album, is for most of the musicians, we recorded it in May of 2021. For most of the folks, this is the first time they had been in a studio since COVID. I mean, so for 18 months or whatever. And many hadn't even played on live gigs yet. We're kind of a family. I mean, honestly, we don't, as I've mentioned before, we, we there hasn't been a whole lot of personnel to change. And so to get back together, there was such an incredible sense of love and appreciation. I thought of a different title for the album. And the minute they heard about this, the tune, I changed instead of within, I found there was within me, I changed everything to within us to make it collective for the band. And they immediately said, oh, you got to name the album that, Chuck. That's the album title right there. They were right. Solidified what we were trying to do at that point in time. That's so true. I mean, we all had to look inside. We, we'd never get the chance to do that. So these lemons, the lemonade was to, to do this soul searching to some degree. But then by changing it to within us, it became collective. Then it was was not just looking within us it was looking at the power that by being together that we had which was again from coming together as a band was what was to me really important at that point in time and I think to them too you know listening then to the music you know we can hear that translated it just this joy of playing and being able to get together Apalachicola a lot of people probably don't know about Apalachicola it's a little town and kind of community or area right in the bend of the Gulf Bend of Florida not a hugely popular tourist spot old Florida. Mostly it was known for producing almost the entire oyster crop of Florida. A variety of environmental disasters. There wasn't one problem. I, I've been an environmentalist for, for years and years and almost all of my previous albums have all spoken to that in one sense or another. This one's probably the least involved in that, but I couldn't get away from it totally. But So I'm writing this album and all of a sudden I see this news story where basically the oysters are just gone. Along with the oysters being gone, all the livelihoods of these people, the raisin debts are for the, this whole town. I was just stunned. And then they started going through all the various things that had gone on over the years and how nobody had addressed this. One right after the other, it had not been addressed until all of a sudden now, what everybody was saying, it's eventually going to happen. Well, it happened. This is about the closest thing I've ever written to a piece that's just a true prayer, a prayer for our environment, to an extent, a prayer for the folks in Apalachicola, but it's really bigger than that. Apalachicola was just the story that fed this. The Apalachicola is kind of the deep south, and so you're going to hear a lot of the deep southern, including blues influences I think you'll find especially Sarah Caswell's violin incredibly haunting Sarah solo of one of your previous albums actually became Grammy nominated it's pretty rare that a solo from a big band album gets nominated for a best solo award much less a violin solo okay let's be concerned about this environment because we just got the warning too that everything goes faster than we thought we need to all chip in and and, and do what we can every little thing helps so here it is. That's what happened. A Palachicola. This is by my guest today, Chuck Owen, from the upcoming album Within Us with his group, The Jazz Search.
That was Apalachicola. This is a selection from the upcoming album Within Us by my guest today, Chuck Owen, with his group, The Jazz Search. This was my kind of tribute to the band. What I tried to envision in writing this was the community that we've become and how much fun it is and how when every time we get together, kind of sparks do fly. And that led me to think of, again, I kind of do a lot in outdoors. I got a place up in North Carolina go and we have a big fire pit. You know, the family will get around. I've never done this and I probably never will, but I love the idea of all of Surge just kind of getting around this fire pit, everybody just relaxing out in the air and the huge bonfire. And, and so there's a point in this where it's almost like, it's almost dance-like, but it's in my mind was just everybody just having a blast around this fire, almost to the point where they were dancing. But what's really incredible about this scene, so you've got the scene of the bonfire with the sparks shooting up every so often, which you'll actually hear. I don't do a whole lot of visual portrayal in writing. This is one place where you will hear my, and multiple times you'll hear the actual sparks flying. We were recording recording this, we were right in the midst of recording it, and the studio manager barged through the door, walked very quickly up to me and said, you've got to shut everything down. Why? He said, the fire department's been called, there's arcing, electrical arcing on the roof. They've said the building has to be evacuated now. And I said, so you're telling me that while we're recording, and we had, here I was looking at, at the tune, Sparks Fly, Sparks are literally flying on the, the roof. You couldn't make this stuff up. It was incredible. And so we suspended recording for about three hours, and the fire department was out at the recording studio and investigating and ultimately sparks weren't fine but they were in the recording studio when we were we were making music well okay let's have those sparks fly but beware yeah. around when you listen to that song it might just have that power so this is sparks fly from the upcoming album within us written and arranged by my guest today chuck owen watch out for those sparks yeah.
why a selection from the upcoming album within us by the Jazz Search, a group led by my guest today, Chuck Owen. And the sparks were flying in the music. The sparks were flying in the studio. And it's so great to, to have you here, Chuck. We got one more to go, which has a gorgeous trumpet violin blending in there. It's like yeah. really amazing. So, well, I guess when you know, we'll lead to this last one, but I also want to hear a little bit about next steps for you and beyond. <laughs> uh, I, it's easier for me to talk about the tune than it is the, far, the next steps. Well, I mean, the next steps. <laughs> I mean, um, so actually, there is another. There, um, I do have another album coming out in the not too distant future. Um, that I recorded even before this one, honestly, just a, just a month before this um, with w, the great WDR big band. So that's, oh, cool. I think that will be released in the spring of 2022. Uh, we don't have a, a, a specific date yet, but uh, I'm really looking forward to that coming out. Um, yeah. And I, I might just uh, actually um, informally retired from teaching at the University of South Florida. Um, I've been there for 40 years, so, um, it's kind of a, I, there are some new horizons and, you know, I've done it at a time when there are a lot of things going on. For, so I'm not going to be idle, that's for sure. Um, I'm, you know, looking forward to doing more composing. I've got a small group that we just had barely launched when COVID hit. So I really haven't had a chance to do much with it, but uh, it involves mostly folks from the surge uh, and and the whole idea was to do some of the surge music and then some of the music i wrote expressly for the small group um uh the, about the only changes is, is matt wilson's plays plays drums in the in the small group called resurgence and so i am hoping that once covid settles down and once i've got these album projects out of the way they will start doing a little bit more with that but i'm looking forward to doing kind of a bunch of people over the years have talked to me about doing kind of commissions for them or special projects and I just haven't had time and so I'm hoping I'm going to get the some of that get out and do some guest conducting at other places and, and I love talking about composing and so I, I love nothing more than to go to other universities I've done a fair amount of this and I'm hoping to do more is just go in for a couple of days and talk to students about composing and arranging you and also then, have a leading role in the International Society. Yeah, Society. and and very, very, very much so. Um, and, uh, you know, I've continued to put a lot of time in that. So I'm not sure it's going to change, but it won't. My the time I put into it moving forward is not going to get any less either. I, um, I'll continue to serve as its president for another um, two and a half years, I guess. Um, so uh, that's and it's, a, it's something that, you know, I was very involved in in birthing so it's it's very important to me and uh, um, i'll definitely be spending a lot of time there we've got a big symposium coming up next may in austin texas um, mm -hmm. that we just announced um, and so that that's really exciting it's incredible guest artists there um, and then there's some stuff outside of music that i just want to do i want to do um, you know more hiking as i mentioned i like you know being out in the the woods and all that so i'm hoping to do a little bit more of that more photography um i've got kind of a kid's novel i've been working on often oh, cool. on for the years so maybe i told you i like story storytelling so this is actually telling stories so um nice. so yeah so there's a, there's a lot a lot of things i'm spending more time with my, my grandkids and, and kids and all that so um you know there's a lot i'm looking forward to yeah, I like, you know, you're not going to sit in your armchair and you're doing nothing. <laughs> no, uh, and nobody would believe me if I said I did, that knows me would believe me if I said I would, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's really cool. So our last one, Better Claim, with this gorgeous trumpet violin blending. What should we know about this one? To well, this is a tune that I actually... Um, um, because it's the 25th anniversary, I actually thought about going back and arrange, rearranging a bunch of other pieces. I, I only really did this one that is kind of a rearrangement. I did kind of mash up on a tune that we, we weren't listening to today, mash up a couple of um, classic tune milestones with an, uh, the very first piece I ever wrote for The Surge, um, which was kind of a fun project. But uh, 
But this one, I didn't change the tune at all from when we released it at, um, on my album River Runs, but that was with done with a whole symphony or size orchestra and, and with the surge in the middle of that. Um, so this time around, it's just for big band. And it's just something I actually been meaning to get to for, for years. I just hadn't been able to get to it. Um, and I switched soloists very intentionally to differentiate it. So um, uh, this time I've, I've got the, the um, trumpet solo, a, a vibe solo, and then Sarah Caswell on violin plays a really important role kind of throughout and particularly in that, that intro with the trumpet. Um, uh, but the idea is um, this was the final movement of that uh, of River Runs and, um, and it comes from uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm blanking on the actual, um, the, the poem um, uh, about selecting a path. You're going to have to edit this part. I'm going to have to figure out something here because um, <laughs> I should know this. Um, uh, anyway, um, Not sure uh, the, the idea is, you know, you, you, uh, cho choosing the path. And, and you have options and you end up choosing a path, which may or may not be the best path, but you know, that day it was the path you, you chose and it brings you opportunities. And yet there's this little hair bit of reluctance of what if I had chosen this other path? Um, and that's, that's kind of what this, this reference is. It all stems off of rap, river rafting trips I've done through the years um, and this, particular one was allied with a, one of my most favorite trips um, that I did with my two daughters. Um, uh, and I took them out to the Salmon River in Idaho. And it, the Salmon River, we went through the, it's um, the, called the River of No Return um, due to Lewis and Clark, um, you know, their first trip through there. And uh, just incredible scenery. And the river was amazing. Um, um, and it was a, you know, it was definitely a path that, you know, that worked out. And uh, so that, that's, that's this, uh, um, that's the kind of behind this. This ended up being the other piece I was gonna have Chick Korea play. Okay. Um, and I had, you know, I originally was gonna write a brand new one for him, but I started thinking about this and I thought this is gonna be perfect to feature Chick. Um, and, and that whole intro at the beginning was originally gonna be, um, chick with the trumpet um and and the whole vibes so everything that the vibes does was going to be chick and that's um what led me to warren um and, and the vibes is uh i started after it wasn't gonna be chick there's no way i was gonna put in another pianist in that role i couldn't do it i mean that it just didn't feel right so i thought well what would feel right to somehow honor chick and in my mind turned to all the, those beautiful albums Chick did with Gary Burton. Um, and I started thinking, and so I actually, I, I called Gary or got in contact with Gary. And, and I knew he wasn't playing. I knew he had retired from playing, but I just, I thought I'd check and make sure, that, you know, and he immediately dismissed any notion of, of playing. Um, uh, but by that point in time, I had, quickly decided I wanted vibes, you know? Um, and so, and I rem remembered hearing Warren on a bunch of things and I didn't know him personally, but, um, but I thought this would be perfect. Um, so, so that's a long winded answer of how I got to having vibes uh, in this project and, and Warren playing on this um, particular tune, but, uh, and then Clay Jenkins on trumpet, just, I mean, his soloing on this is amazing. Um, and again, he's a very dear friend, so I, I love the chance to feature him. Mm. Yeah, and, and I did a show with Warren a few weeks ago. Uh, oh, did you? Months ago, yeah, I got to know him. It was so he's a, He's a fun guy. Yeah. He's a wonderful guy and an amazing, amazing musician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and a lover of roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, well, it was absolutely a pleasure to have you on the show and to talk about this gorgeous music. So find it at chuckowen.com 
and it'll be out on all the favorite platforms stream it day and night and <laughs> and and just uh just enjoy it's it, it's a real special thing to hear not just the music the way it was composed but the way you told me it was recorded with this joy of, of musicians coming back yeah. together and just performing together and, and you can hear that <laughs> I, I think you can too actually but uh but thank you so much Monica, for, ha for having me and and giving me a chance to talk about this absolutely my pleasure so good luck with everything here is better claim from the album within us the Jazz Search, led by Chuck Owen, who was also my guest today. Thank you, Chuck, and enjoy. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Thank you. 
Thank you for listening to Talking Jazz today. My guest was composer, educator, arranger, Chuck Owen. Tune in for Talking Jazz every Thursday at 11 a.m. and every Monday at 7 p.m. right here on WETF 105.7 FM in South Bend, Indiana or online at wetfthejazzstation.org. Also find videos of previous shows on YouTube on the Monica Hersick channel. That's M-O-N-I-K-A-H-E-R-Z-I-G. Subscribe to get the newest updates. Thank you for listening.